Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going to do something a bit different today. I'm going to go over in a course of two videos. We're going to make a door in Neos. This allows me to cover a component that's kind of awkward to explain without a real world application. So this is a significant real world application for the component. So that component's a joint and this can be part one of making the door powered by joint, which is getting the door into the game. But I want to start by showing you the finished product. So here's the door. You can see it looks uh, metal and I don't know, prison-y, whatever you want to say. And you'll see there's a handle here. When I lower the handle, I can then open the door and go through. You can then close the door, release the handle, and now I can't, I can't open the door anymore. So here's what we're going to make, and uh, we'll get started. First of all, though, just wanted to provide credits for the model author. So this is a Sketchfab model. The uh, link to the model will be in the description. It's by a user called 3D Mason on the uh, Sketchfab site. Uh, the door is super cool. I will provide the link, and you can follow along if you'd like to make this door yourself. So to start with, I'm going to go ahead and delete the uh, existing door. So make it gravel again, and then we can delete it. And then I'm going to open up my file browser, which is under tools file browser in the ribbon menu and navigate to a folder where the door is. I'll turn on my private UI so you can see that. And uh, private UI, there we go. And so here in the, in my file browser, you can see that there is computer D documents unity door. So here we have the, the door. When you extract a model from Sketchfab, you'll commonly find a two folders, source and textures. We're gonna go inside source first, and you'll find usually an FBX or an OBJ in here. In this case, it's a door one FBX, so we'll open that. It's a 3D model, regular, and it is auto scale, unknown scale. Import now, and we've got our door. Let's move that backwards so it's out of the way for the moment. And uh, You'll see it's white right now, and that's because we need to set up the material for it. So now if we go to door textures, you'll see that there's a bunch of files in here. Rather than importing them individually, we can click the folder textures and use this arrow icon up here. Then we can select batch import image texture, and you'll see they all come in, and they come in a nice grid organized. So you can see here that we've got uh, one, two, three, four textures. Sorry, five, one, two, three, four, five. I can't count today. Five textures here, um, and we need to match them to uh, Neos's material system. For that, we're gonna need a material gun, so let me get one. So inventory, uh, central tools, material tooltip. With this equipped, I'm gonna go up to the door and I'm gonna secondary select. This will grab the existing material on the door so we don't need to set up a new one. And you'll see it's just a white ball right now. I'm gonna open up the edit menu by opening up the hand menu and going to edit. And then we'll have the PBS metallic inspector. I'm gonna put that to the side as it's kind of big. And now we need to basically match these textures up to textures within the uh, PBS metallic here. Now Neos doesn't have um, every kind of map available in PBS Metallic, and that's because it differs shader by shader. Um, different shaders require different maps. And so you won't always find an exact match, but you'll find something that looks good enough, um, or you can try changing up shaders. I'll go over shaders and materials in general in another video, but here's a simple overview just for this use case. So um, the first and usually easiest one to find is the normal map. The normal map is this blue one up here. If you've got a blue image that's got kind of reds and greens on it, and if it looks like a kind of like embossed 3D projection of the um, object you've got, then it's a normal map. That's in, so I'm gonna put it to the side. And then the next one is this one. This has a lot of variation in color. There's greens, you can see a bit of grunge here. Um, there's grays. So it's the albedo texture, so that goes in here. Those are the two that are immediately obvious. The next you kind of have to have a bit of intuition about, but there's also an easy way, which I'll show you. If we encrypt the inspector tip and then we secondary select an image, you'll see up there it says door one AO. So that means it's the AO map. So that stands for ambient occlusion. So that goes ahead in the occlusion map slot. And then this one over here is door one metallic. And so we can grab that and put it in the metallic slot. 
And then up here we have roughness. Now, as I talked about before, there's not always a matching texture to put them in. So you can see here, there is no roughness, and that means that there's nowhere for it to go. That doesn't matter. For now, just ignore it. There is a way to combine metallic and roughness together, but um, that requires an outside piece of software like Photoshop or something. Um, I don't usually bother. I just look at the um, model and see if I'm happy with it. So this door is metallic. There's grunge at the bottom. Shine, the handle's shiny, you'll even see, where is it? There's the hinge, the hinge is metallic as well, so um, it's reflecting light. It looks good for me, at least for the purposes of a tutorial, so I'll leave it there. I don't need to worry about the roughness image. With those all done, we can close the material inspector, and we can go up to these and delete them. So I'm going to get big for a second, just so I can grab them a little bit easier, and go into fly mode. Yeah, missed. That's those gone, and then we can even go ahead and delete the material um, tool because we're done with it, and then we'll go back to normal size. And then hop back into walk around mode. That's it for part one. We've imported the model into the game, and we have a door. You could use this within a world already, it just wouldn't be interactable. So if you wanted a locked door or an inaccessible door, you've got it. Just go in game and put this in a world, it's a door. Join us again for part two, where we'll make this door interactive so that you can turn the handle and then open it. See you next time.